Roll Tide and welcome back to Brian Denny Stadium. I'm Roger Hoover inside the Advantage Center. Now, please be joined by Alabama men's basketball forward Jaron Stevenson. Now back, ready for his sophomore year here at the Capstone. Jaron, roll tide, man. Good to see you. Roll tide, roll tide. Well, what's the summer been like for you? Uh, we know you had a very interesting time right after Alabama's run in the uh, Final Four, but uh, how has it been uh, getting back here to Tuscaloosa? Yeah, it's been nice getting back. Um, I've been working out a whole bunch uh, recently, so just getting back to um, here and just seeing the fans and uh, just getting back to the people that I knew here, um, it was nice. Um, and, yeah, just getting back with the coaches too, the players, and just seeing them, it was nice. Yeah, it's really good to have these summer workouts. So what was it like getting to see everybody once again after uh, the Final Four run and also get to meet so many new faces that are on this roster? Yeah, yeah, I feel like we have a great team this year. Um, and again, yeah, seeing the guys again, you know, Trelly and Mo, you know, I'm real tight with Mo. So yeah, just seeing him again. And, um, I feel like we can make a great run this year, uh, win a couple championships. Uh, I feel like we have the, uh, talent and caliber to do that. So yeah, I'm, I'm excited for this upcoming year. Yeah, everybody's really excited about the news that you decided to withdraw your name from the NBA draft comeback. Uh, Mark Sears ended up doing the same thing. What's it like getting to see him and knowing what you guys are capable of on the court at the same time? Yeah, I feel like yeah, we're both great players. Mark, excellent shooter, um, can really lead the team. Um, he showed that last year, helped lead us through the NCAA tournament, um, helped, um, uh, helped us rack up some wins. Um, yeah, Mark's a great player. Um, that's the reason why he was looked at um, from the NBA, even um, being a shorter guard. I mean, that just speaks how much talent and how much skill he has um, in order to get those looks. So, yeah, Mark. Mark's a great player, um, great leader, too. So, so yeah, I mean, that shows. How much fun is this time of the year kind of getting everybody together for the first time? Uh, who's among the newcomers? Who's really impressed you? I like LeBaron. Yeah, LeBaron's really – Really tough, in my opinion. <laughs> but um, yeah, his, his his he has great quickness, his ability to to handle the ball, um, use pick and rolls, um, make the right reads. Um, he's been winning a lot in practice too, so it's always nice when he's on my team because he helps yeah, our team win. So he, I feel like LeBaron's a great player. And then how about somebody we had in that chair uh, talking with us about three weeks ago? Big Cliff Clifford. Big Cliff. Oh yeah, Cliff. Cliff's nice too. Um, he had transferred from Rutgers. Um, I'm not sure. Was he like the conference player mm -hmm. over there? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, he's a great player. He's real big and strong. So, <laughs> sets great screens, great lob threat, and plays great defense, able to block shots. He's blocked a couple of my shots. So, so yeah, he's a great player for sure. Yeah, does that help your game even more knowing that now, okay, every day in practice you get to yeah. go up against a great rim protector so yeah. that when you see them in a game, that's no surprise really. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that's big with me, um, getting used to yeah, rim protectors and – um, different things like that, going against that in practice like every day, that's going to help improve my game. So, yeah, just an addition to Cliff, not only just for games for our team, is he going to help in that sense, but he's also going to help our team in just getting around rim protectors and helping in that sense too. Then how about strength and conditioning? What are you and Henry Barrera working on right now? Um, right now I'm in the strong group, so right now I'm just working to build on my strength and what I have right now, working to build on some weight too. Um, that was a big thing um, that um, the NBA guys wanted for me was to build on weight. Um, so, yeah, Henry's been on that. Um, been working out pretty much every day, every weekday especially, um, getting to it. Um, yeah, that's the main thing, I feel like. What kind of motivator is he in the weight room? And then what kind of team does he form along with Clark, along with Amanda, make sure you have the nutrition the right way? Yeah, they communicate very well. They all work together very well. Um, he's been a great motivator too. Um, with different exercises, he's always out there just pushing us, trying to um, push us to the best of our ability, the, to our top weight, our max. I mean, obviously safely, but like um, he always pushes us to get stronger. Um, and then again, Clark and Amanda, um, they've also been great. Um, Amanda um, always been on me trying to eat um, <laughs> my eating habits, making sure I get three meals a day, eat snacks in between and different things like that so I could build my weight. And then Clark, uh, making sure I get in the uh, get treatment after practice, before practice, making sure my muscles and um, my ligaments and stuff are all good um, and stretching and stuff like that. I feel like Clark's been a, ha did a good job with that. All right, you started to laugh when we talked about Amanda and nutrition. What's the yeah. toughest thing for you to stick with? Uh, is yeah. it the three square meals, some of the healthy snacks? What is it? Uh, I'm not a big eater. I used to be, but uh, yeah, I've been slacking a little bit. So Amanda's been on me <laughs> quite a bit recently. So 
uh yeah, just making sure I get my meals in. It's a big point of focus right now with me and Amanda. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's it. That's certainly good. Uh, is any part of that be due to how you grew up, uh, mostly in South Korea for a large part of your life? Yeah, South Korea. That's I was there for like six, seven years from like first to seventh grade. So, yeah, that's like a big part of my life. Um, I was able to watch my dad play over there in South Korea. I grew up in international school so i didn't really learn too much korean i wish i paid more attention in in that sense and learned more korean but it was nice being able to meet um different um cultures because in inter- international school there's different cultures like there's russians there's um indians and different um people in that sense so it was nice just meeting people with different um cultural backgrounds um and yeah just growing up overseas i mean it's, it's nice just learning about different countries and in, in that sense too yeah, you mentioned your dad playing professionally uh, for a long time. You ended up playing for 20 years professionally after he was yeah. a college player at yeah, Richmond. Your mom played in North Carolina. I know everyone talks about that <laughs> around the Sweet 16. Yeah. So with that kind of background, were you basically born with the basketball in the crib? Yeah, pretty much. I've been playing pretty much since I was two. Always had a ball in my hand. My dad always uh, pushed me. Um, always had a ball around me, too. So we had the mini hoop. Uh, <laughs> Always played on that, too. Always had fun on that. I have a bigger brother, too, so always competed against him. I feel like he's helped me um, get better, too, and like competition-wise and just competing against him. I feel like he's helped me improve my skills. Um, so, yeah, I've been bur- around basketball a lot of my life, um, and I've learned a lot from that. So was basketball pretty much the only sport you played growing up, or did you try some other things? Yeah, I feel like I'm good at other sports, too, and I – uh, had have potential in other sports, but I just kept basketball the main thing. My parent, I, I was thinking about football too, but my parents didn't want me to uh, risk injury in that because there's a high high chance of uh, injury in football and different hits and stuff like that. So I just stuck with basketball. That's a really good decision. Uh, thinking, I mean, you, you know, being overseas for your dad's career, I mean, a great long career, and that's tough to do. Uh, mm-hmm. One of my good friends, Richard Hendricks, did a long time uh, as well in different spots. Just what is international basketball like? What was it like to grow up around that international pro game? Yeah. Um, yeah, the athletes are definitely different. It's a lot better here in America. Um, but I feel like overseas they have a bigger focus on, like, team wise like they focus on working together <clears throat> excuse me as a team and um they do great off ball things um overseas I feel like and I feel like that's a great way to play basketball it's taught me a lot to play off the ball um I feel like yeah, it has really helped my game so then your family moves back to the states back to North Carolina when's your game start to get really sharp when a lot of colleges start contacting you and uh, trying to get you on their campus one day yeah, I didn't even realize I was I was that good at first. Um, yeah, when I came back to the United States, uh, I joined the AAU team. Well, actually, we came over during the summers um, yeah. f- since my, my first to seventh grade. So, yeah, like my fourth and fifth grade year, I was playing on a um, team in my local city. It's called the Bull City Nets. Um, and, yeah, that's when it started to click and people started realizing who I was. Um, yeah, and then from there, I joined Team United, and I played there pretty much the rest of my high school, my middle school and high school years, and um, they were one of the best teams in the nation. We played in the EYBL, and that's when I really started to realize, man, I might be this good, so uh, I still feel like I don't realize how good I, I can be and how good I am, but that really, really, like, helped my confidence and stuff, just on being able to compete out there with the best players. Who were some of those best players you were either teammates with or yeah. competed against now maybe you've seen in college basketball or some that are already on to the pros? Yeah, teammates-wise, uh, Quay Watson, I always thought he was tough. Um, Jackson was pretty cool. Jackson Prunty, um, he just went to is it College of Charleston um, and competing against different guys too. Um, like I like the Knight Riders. They had a whole bunch of great guys over there. and We played them in PGM. We had a close game with them, but I think we lost. At least the last year we did. Um, they always got great guys over there. Um, but, yeah, just the different athletes and just competing with them, the different skill levels and their quickness and being able to compete with them, it just 
it really helped my confidence. Really helped your confidence, got you on the radar again of all these college teams. Uh, who are some of the first schools that reached out to you? What was the recruitment process like? Um, oh, yeah, and Camp Scott. I mean, Camp Scott's a very tough. He went to South Carolina. There you go. Um, yeah, Camp Scott. Sorry, can you say that again? Yeah, absolutely. With that, you know, playing on a very high level, Peach Jam, huge events like that, you were noticed by colleges. Uh, who were some of the first schools that started to reach out to you? And then when did Alabama start yeah. to enter into the picture? Yeah, so yeah, the first the first college I reached out was UNC. Um, they were right down the road, 10 minutes. Oh. Uh, yeah, I really like UNC. I still think they're a great school and stuff, but... Um, and then, yeah, Virginia also came in, Missouri, different schools came pouring in after, well, I got my first offer, I think it was my sophomore year, or maybe the end of my freshman year, maybe. Um, so, yeah, during my sophomore year, the offer started coming in. I started to get more interest, the interest from, like, Wake Forest, NC State, um, again, Missouri, Georgetown, with Patrick Ewing when he was there. Um, and, yeah, yeah, different schools. Um, and Alabama actually came in like last minute during my junior year. Um, yeah, Coach o <clears throat> Coach Oates was very very persuasive, and um, he had a good pitch. Um, he compared me to Noah Clowney and different things like that, and how I would improve in that sense. And um, yeah, I feel like yeah, I made the right decision. Alabama's been great, and yeah, I'm excited. So did he show you a lot of film of Noah and missing like we're gonna use you exactly this way, different yeah. things like that? Yeah, he did. He showed me different film and um spoke about different concepts and what I'd be involved in and stuff like that. Is that why you stuck with number fifteen as well? Uh I was fifteen in high school too, so I just <laughs> Yeah, I just pressed for them. Yeah, everyone was having fun with that. Uh, your first few games being like, oh, Clowney's still out there, number 15, looking exactly the same with some of the different things <laughs> yeah, you're doing. Yeah, same hairstyle and everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Obviously, he's gone on to some really great success. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned the recruit. you're hearing from a lot of schools. Was it really fun getting all that attention, or did at times did it get kind of overwhelming for you? Uh, I'm not really a type of guy that likes a whole bunch of attention. I'm more of a shy type of guy, but – um, yeah, it didn't really affect me too much. I mean, to me, it's just, it is what it is. And I'm just focused on getting better and get getting to my end goal, which is the NBA. Um, so yeah, it didn't really affect me too much. So Alabama enters into the picture. Not only do you decide on Alabama, but also you decide to reclassify. What went into that decision, uh, joining Alabama a year earlier than maybe you expected? Yeah. Reclassing was always on my mind. Uh, I always wanted to do it. Uh, I was kind. Of, I was kind of sick of high school, just sitting there for seven hours, and after that, have to practice and all that. Um, yeah, I was really getting tired of that. So, and I was doing good in school. I was taking all the advanced classes. So, yeah, I was getting kind of sick of that. So, I was just ready to get out of there and and get to the next step of my journey and keep improving. Yeah, didn't you have like a four or five or something like that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Yeah, it was pretty good. It was cool. Uh, that's good. That's about a point and a half yeah. higher than I had to score <laughs> or college, so that's really good. Yeah. Uh, so that allows you to make that decision, join Alabama, even though you are a year younger. What was it like uh, first getting here and uh, getting to see this campus and Coleman Coliseum and meet your teammates a year ago? Yeah, we have a great atmosphere here. Um, I love here. I love the campus layout and everything. I'm um, getting to class and stuff like that. And the different social events they have here. Um, yeah, especially uh, I love the players here too even like before I came I wasn't really able to meet too much of them because again I committed pretty late and stuff like that but um, from when I with the ones I did meet I mean they were pretty cool um, and yeah I just love um, the community they had especially like the basketball department with uh, Clark, Amanda and Henry um, they really know what they're talking about and stuff like that that really persuaded me and yeah, it brought me to my decision. You decide Alabama, you get to play basketball for Nate Oates. So we heard about the recruiting pitch. Uh, how about uh, once you were wearing that crimson jersey? How do you feel like he carved out a role for you last year, both on offense and defense? Yeah, there was a lot of teaching and learning moments for me last year. Um, yeah, I had to learn how to um, adjust to the college level with you know bigger and stronger guys. Um, working on improving my jump shot and being more consistent than that. I'm still working on uh, being consistent overall in general. Um, I had to learn how to do that. Um, you just learn how to 
make different uh, impacts in the game, learn how to impact the game in different ways, I guess, um, whether it's rebounding, blocking shots, um, hoping teammates get open and different things like that. And I feel like yeah, throughout the year I got better at that. And my teammates helped me learn different ways to impact the game too. So, so I feel like that really helped me. Is this the most you've ever worked on defense in your life, kind of learning how to make that blue collar play and things <laughs> yeah, like that? Yeah, I had to because, yeah, the competition at the college level was a lot different. I mean, everybody knows how to play. Everybody's everybody's tough. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, just learning how to guard different positions too, um, whether it's a shorter guard or a big five guy, just learning how to guard different positions too. How many times did you win the hard hat? The hard hat. I was close a couple of times, okay. but I don't think I won it. I was second like two or three times. I wish I. <laughs> well, this year that's got to be yeah, a golden, that's right? Got to be a goal, but <laughs> dang, yeah, I was, I was close a couple of times. You know. There we go. As this basketball team uh, went through its ups and downs a little bit uh, throughout the season, both non-conference play, uh, some really good wins, as start SEC play, didn't have the finish you won. How'd you guys stay positive throughout all of that, leading up to the great run of March Madness? Yeah. Um, we were just confident in ourselves, um, even throughout the losses. We knew um, from like practices and stuff, we still compete. Yeah, coach was definitely on us too. Um, so yeah, we also felt like we had to prove a point, not just to coach, but also just to the naysayers, I guess. <laughs> Let all naysayers know. Let all Link. naysayers know. <laughs> yep. So yeah, that really also helped spark a fire in us and proving those people wrong. Um, we knew we had the talent. Um, yeah, we have great players, again, like Rylan, Grant, um, Mark. Like, we really had a whole bunch of guys that could go. So, yeah, we were just confident in ourselves um, and just it stuck together, I guess. And you guys were a long way away from home. Uh, you're starting out in Spokane, then you go to Los Angeles, and then eventually Phoenix. They did have a little trip back home in between yeah. the Elite Eight and the Final Four, but that also kind of grow the team together because you're spending so much time together around those games. Yeah, yeah, it did. Um, yeah, we spent a lot of time, especially during the Final Four. They had this room where we could – they had, like, games. They had Big Jenga. They had a PlayStation, an Xbox, and uh, we were able to bond in there. Um, I felt like that really helped us. Um, I mean, we had a close game with UConn. I uh, wasn't able to pull it off, but I felt like that really helped us kind of um, at least stick in there and um, yeah, cause havoc. Absolutely. And part of that run, uh, of course, uh, you saw it, I'm sure, when the bracket came out. There's a potential Alabama could play your mom's alma mater in the school you grew up nearby at yeah. uh, the University of North Carolina. Mm -hmm. uh, what was it like getting to suit up against the Tar Heels? Obviously, a great win for the Crimson Tide. How meaningful was that night for you and your family? Um, I mean, I mean, to me, it wasn't like a crazy win. I mean, again, the goal for that it was just getting to the national championship. I mean, it was just, it was more just, well, it got me locked in more. I really, I did want to beat them for sure. Uh, I paid attention to the scout and stuff, but um, I mean, I guess after that win, I'm just focused on the next game. I mean, it was the Clemson game. Yeah. And, um, I didn't have uh, the best game during the North Carolina game. I don't think I even scored. I mean, I made different impacts defensively and stuff, but I mean, I feel like that game really helped me for the next game and help me get locked in. Um, but yeah, again, with the North Carolina game, I mean, I wasn't too like crazy over it. Um, my mom was a little bit in the middle, but, <laughs> but um, yeah, I wasn't really too like focused on th the opponent, I guess, but just focusing on just getting the win. Got the win, took on Clemson. That led to one of your better offensive performances that you had not only in the NCAA tournament, but all throughout the year. What led to some of the success in that game? Yeah, again, just not having the best game against UNC. That really sparked a fire in me and wanted uh, they wanted me to prove a point, I guess. Um, and then, yeah, just <laughs> those two air balls kind of <laughs> kind of made me mad too. So uh, after knocking that uh, first shot down, that really um, that really got me going. Um, just seeing the ball go through after those. Those air balls, um, it really got me confident. And then defensively, that I feel like defensively also helped me get locked in offensively too. Um, getting stops, I drew a charge, um, getting rebounds and just fighting in there. I feel like that also helped me. 
Yeah, it was really cool to see. Great moment. Alabama punches its tickets to the program's first Final Four, and that means a week later you're back in the Phoenix area to play in the Final Four against UConn. Tell us, first of all, about playing basketball in a football stadium with that crazy crowd, uh, so many people there to watch you play, but also the shooting background is a lot different. Did it take a little bit to get adjusted to that? Uh, yes, it's huge. It's, yeah, it's, it's a crazy environment. There's people all around. Uh, and yeah, the court looks tiny yeah. out there. <laughs> and it's elevated a little bit too. Is, is that different too? It is. Oh, yeah, it definitely messes with the depth perception too, with nothing being behind the basket and stuff. But um, yeah, it's definitely an experience for sure. Um, and then you just having everybody around you, just yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's an experience for. Well, quite a run. You're, you're part of the best Alabama basketball team we've ever seen, making a run to the Final Four. What was it like the next few weeks for you as you decided to think about your future, whether it's coming back to Alabama or testing the pro waters? Mm-hmm. Um, again, yeah, my main goal is to make it to the NBA. Um, that's always been my goal since I was younger and stuff. Um, so, yeah, I just went out and tested and um, worked out for a couple of teams again. And... Um, um, I feel like I got better through the experience, learned a lot, um, Got was able to speak with different coaches on what to work on. And, yeah, it's really helping me during this summer, learning what to work on um, for even just for this ne- next upcoming season, I'm sorry, and um, to help improve my draft stock for the next year and stuff like that. So, yeah, I feel like, yeah, that feedback really helped me. What's some of the main feedback you're working on right now or that's going to be a huge point of emphasis for you when we do start the season? Um, just being more consistent, making plays. Um, they said I showed flashes, but I need to be more consistent. Um, and yeah, just going in there, making making more um, dirt or not dirty plays, but you know, doing the dirty work and getting rebounds, um, getting teammates open, and just different things like that. Um, that was a big point of emphasis too. And fans are looking forward to seeing that. What do you feel like your role is going to be on this team with all the new talent that's coming back, plus the really good returners, like you mentioned a moment ago? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm sorry, can you say that again? Yeah, just like what that. do you feel like your role is going to be my and role. what do you hope oh. your role is going to be this year on this team? Yeah, I hope my role is, well, I, I mean, I'm not exactly sure what my role is going to be, but I'm I'm just willing to do whatever it takes um, to um, make us be a successful team and help us win championships. And I'll be a knockdown shooter. Um um, go down, make some plays, drive. I feel like I have a good IQ with that and making the right play in that sense. Um, playing defense too, blocking shots. I mean, I feel like I could do a lot of things on the court. So you're just doing everything, I feel like. You know? We're certainly looking forward to seeing it. Uh, well, Jaron Stevenson, thank you so much for the time you've given us here on Crimson Drive, driven by NASCAR. Just best of luck uh, here in the summer months. Hopefully we'll chat again uh, a little bit closer to the season. But thank you for your time. Roll tight. All right, thank you. Roll tight.